Welcome to the Fat Guys with Smokers podcast. I'm Mike. And I'm John. We're a couple of overweight barbecue enthusiasts trying to share our love for sweet and smoky food with the world. Thanks for hanging out with us as we talk about life, share recipes, successes, and failures that have all led to our love of cooking outdoors. Well, welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Fat Guys with Smoker. I'm John, and here with Mike. How you doing, Mike? Oh, I'm happy to be here. It's a good way to, to spend an evening, I think. Yeah, we're uh, normally we do these Saturday morning. It's a Monday night that we're getting together to to do this. It's it's kind of a nice way to break up the week. It kind of. I'm not gonna lie. I was pretty excited when we decided to do this. This makes Monday so nice. much better. Oh yeah, dude. I like it. I uh, got to the office this morning. My first call was at eight thirty. Um, I didn't hang up the phone for more than five minutes until quarter quarter to five. Ugh. Gross. It was a it was a brutal brutal Monday to to start the week, but I think we're I think we're in for a good one. So Yeah. I'm excited. Yeah, how uh how school? Dude, How's... it's not June yet. So <laughs> that's how school is going. Oh come on! You're uh, you're a couple weeks into into a new try. Things it's have got to be going all right. It's it's not bad. I've got good kids. I really enjoy it. But man, summer can't come fast yeah, enough. I'm huh? getting to that point where it's just like, all right. I mean, we we get it, right? Like, let's just let's call it a day. Yeah, it was it was brutal at one point. So in my office, my back is to my window, mm-hmm. um, and I was on a Zoom call at some point, and someone goes is that snow behind you? And I turned around and it was just like coming down in full force. And I, yes. Oh, I was at least grateful it warmed back up and it was all melted by the time I got out to my truck. Yeah. It's been, it's been a good winter and it's good for us because we were in a extreme drought or whatever, but I swear last year at this time it was, I mean, it's the first day of spring today and we have, Two feet of snow on the ground, yeah. I had no idea. Yeah. The crazy crazy part is we were in Salt Lake last night for dinner with Haley's parents. Mm -hmm. Um, There's no snow down there. Really? It was 58 degrees driving down there. And then I was out helping helping my father-in-law on the grill. Or I guess not the grill. We were frying uh, scones for Navajo tacos. Right on. And... Like, yeah, out there in, you know, short sleeves, just hanging out, talking. It was, it was a completely different experience to, you know, drive through the canyon and (laughs) have it snowing (laughs) when, when we got home last night. Oh man. I swear last year at this time we were, I mean, it was, it was spring, like it felt springy. Yeah. Which is allegedly it's good. Apparently we're in some kind of drought or something, but (laughs) holy cow. Worst drought in a hundred years, and yeah. but yeah, snowpack's looking really good. It is, it is. Alrighty, um, hey, we got some got some more shout outs. We did, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna keep bringing this up just because I know you're not gonna tell Damon, and I want Damon to listen <laughs> and hear this. Uh, your your reel continues to get traction and attention. Went for another three thousand view run. Yeah, dude. Over the weekend, we're almost to twenty one thousand views. <laughs> Jeez. I say again, I've put a lot more time and thought into some of the other garbage that I've put out there on social media, and this was just a, all right, sweet, yeah, whatever, buddy, just to get him off my back, and it's doing really well, which, it was fun, it's a fun thing, but yeah, I don't want his head to get too big, you know? No, it, I don't want him growing up wanting to be an influencer <laughs> for a career, you know? Gross. Yeah, who would <laughs> Who would dream about having a podcast? And, yeah, I'm trying to and an Instagram account, right? Yeah, exactly. It's but, the worst. Um, but we did get a couple other shout outs. Uh, our buddy Kyler around the corner here, mm-hmm. um, hit me up for Haley's mac and cheese recipe, and yeah. uh, I know he's excited about that one. So Kyler, thanks for watching. Thanks for uh, for reaching out to us. Mm-hmm. Um, and then your buddy Demeron. Yeah. Threw a great idea on the YouTube comments, uh, baked potatoes. Yeah. 
just while you're cooking whatever. He mentioned just throw those on the grill and. Well, throw them on the grill and genius. I'm a huge fan of baked potatoes as their own meal and like leftover meat. Yeah, man, absolutely. Baked potatoes, like that's that's a uh, that's Idaho's blank palate. Yeah, that you can do all sorts of things. Oh yeah, you can get. I mean, I think that's a great idea. Leftover meat or whatever. I mean, I love a potato bar. Throw yeah. some chili on it, whatever you want. So I think that's a swell idea. Yeah. I like it. So thanks everyone. Keep them coming. Um, it really is fun to like get on and see comments and it makes it worth it. Like, like I, we've said this before, but it's really fun to talk and, and, you know, we have a good, good chat going, but when people, other people start throwing things in, it's like, oh yeah, this is why we're trying to do this, you know? Yep. So it's good to get other people's perspective. So please don't be shy. Leave us a comment. Be rude, be nice, whatever. We just want to hear from you. It's oh. good to good to get a little interaction with people. Yeah, oh. cool. Well, uh, for a shout out this week, we uh, we were just talking about this. We yeah, found uh, grilling with dad. Yeah, he's on YouTube. He's on Instagram, um, and he's a uh, from my hometown. Well, I'll call it my hometown. You have he's, a lot of hometowns. <laughs> I claim Chicago is home really from Texas grew up all over the place, but, um, uh, he's from outside of Chicago. Um, and is a huge big green egg guy and mm. just cooks all sorts of things. The, uh, the braided pork loin. Oh yeah. That I did for, what was that for? It was something oh, at church. Yeah. I don't know. Um, for one of the smaller groups, we braided a pork loin. Yeah. He was the one that gave me the idea. Yeah, that's cool. So, I yeah, I mean, I had never really heard of him until you brought him up, and I I know I've seen one or two of his videos, you know, just researching. But uh, reading his bio, he sounds like our kind of people. Like, just like <laughs> I'm not a professionally trained chef, but I love doing it, and I'm an average guy. And I mean, he's got a lot of cool looking stuff on there. So. Yeah, the, the comment that he had on there, he was like, "Well, you know." Like all guys, I bought a grill when I turned 35. <laughs> and decided to start an Instagram page. Yeah. Which I did, I turned 35 last year and I didn't buy a grill. I mm. feel like, I mean, I'm not going to get any more into World War II than I already am. So <laughs> yeah. I feel like I, uh, I feel like I owe myself a, a new grill. Right? I mean, I'm not going to complain, but I'll, I'll put a word in with Haley. But yeah, make sure you say it as you're running out the door tonight. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I value my life. So, uh, yeah, he seems yeah. like a sweet, I mean, good videos, like delicious looking stuff, down to earth, dude, like our people, I think. Yeah. And I'm super nervous to say his name. So he'll have to, he'll have to come on here one day and tell us that we're wrong. Oh, love it. So, uh, bring it on. If you're not following grilling with dads, go, f go follow Maycheck and, uh, and enjoy his content. So yeah, very fun stuff, and yeah, like I say, down to earth dude. I'm on board. Yeah. So speaking of coming on though, I feel like we need to make an announcement. I think so too. Yeah. You set this up. Tell us what in the world were you thinking, John? <laughs> well, uh, so M Molly Bruin Barbecue. Mm -hmm. We've, uh, I mean, we've swapped comments back and forth on, on Instagram for a couple of years on first on my Hayden barbecue page and now on, uh, on the fat guys with smoker page, but he's a, he's a fellow educator like you. Yeah. Um, assistant principal, right? Yep. He's an assistant principal. Yeah. But we were joking around. He's like, yeah, if you ever want to want a middle-aged assistant school or assistant high school, I think he's a middle school principal. I don't know. Anyways. One or secondary something. Yeah. If you want a, a school administrator to come on and talk about stuff, <laughs> like, sure, I'm down. So I hit him up this weekend. Um, so our next episode will be an interview with him. Yeah. I'm really excited. I'm stoked. I, hopefully he'll fit right in. I mean, that's, again, our people. Yeah. Like, new dad, balances work, and barbecue. Like, I'm pretty excited. Yeah. That'll yeah. be fun. All righty. Well, we talked about it's almost spring. Yes. It's officially spring, even if it doesn't feel like it and look like it outside. Yep. Um, it is. And my wife loves spring. Mm -hmm. 
Um, one, because she gets to start working in her garden. We made the the pilgrimage to the seed store this weekend. Ooh. She's into it. Dude, like, it's... I didn't realize how into it she was until you started telling me about it. She is... She's into it. She is into it. She's got her chicks. She's uh, working on her coop. Um, she is excited because it it means it's the time of year that I clean out the garage. Mm. Um, yeah. And do a little spring cleaning. But it also means it's time to clean your grill. Yes. Like, and I go full on deep clean and spend three or four hours cleaning all of my grills. And uh, we thought that would be a good time for us to good thing for us to talk about today. Absolutely. So I went to on Saturday, I went and got, uh, in homage to your first reel on fat guys with smokers. I, uh, went to Costco, got some tri tip. Uh-huh. You didn't, uh, you didn't bother to film the experience and let everybody look at dude, you. Dude, I suck at the content. I'm trying to get better. I'm still bitter about freaking Damon still in my thunder on his. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not sure. I am emotionally ready to walk into walk into Costco again with a camera. I thought of you the whole time. <laughs> anyway, I was I was uh, going to cook it on my uh, grilla, on my pellet grill, and it was filthy. And I thought, man, like, tis the season. We got to get this going. So I ended up cooking it on my drum and. Was able to see a little bit of grass in the middle of my lawn through all the snow, and just thought, "Yeah, let's do a let's do a little talk about a little TLC for our ladies." Do you name your girls? Um, I do because Traeger lets you like in yeah. their app. Yeah, my uh, my Ironwood is Darth Brisket. Oh, I like that. Yeah, mine are all ladies. My gorilla is Isabel. Isabel, huh? Yeah. Like the harlot that Coriantum goes after. You know. <laughs> That's what it came from. <laughs> um, anyway. <laughs> There's, what... There are just so many things there that are hilarious about the fact of yeah. all the time I spend <laughs> trying to use my grills instead of doing other things that would be better off. That's exactly what... I thought this is the thing that's going to drive a wedge between me and Whitney if there's anything. So I named her Isabel. Um, Anyway. What do we need to clean our grills, John? You are kind of... I'm new to the pellet grill world. And honestly, I feel like... I don't know. I feel like... I hope nobody calls anybody. But I feel like I abused my first grill. Like... I feel like it was the type of, you know, the people that just tie a dog to the tree and throw some food every once in a while and neglect him. I feel like I did that to my first grill. Like, never cleaned it, never covered it. You talking about your silver back here? Which grill are we talking about? No, my first gas grill. And it just rusted out and Mm -hmm. was just a disaster. So, I am... I feel like I need to repent and just be better with all my current grills. Okay, well, this, but, this just got really heavy. I feel like we're having a having a different kind of conversation. Listen, I got to tell somebody, okay? It's been weighing on my mind for years, and I just need to come clean. Hey, w- whatever you say between you, me, and the, on average, 100 downloads, That's 200 true. downloads, we get an episode. I think, yeah. think we can keep it pretty. You guys get it. I mean, yeah. No, it, and it's it's hard. I think the big thing is discipline. Mm-hmm. Um, and we'll we can talk through both of these. Like I do a very deep, thorough annual clean on my grills, um, my gas grill and my my pellet grills. Mm-hmm. Um, and then if you do that every year, then as long as you're really disciplined and every time you cook, you do a couple of things, or every couple of times you mm-hmm. cook, um, you'll be in good shape. Yeah. So I think, I think discipline is kind of the key word, like, because it's the fun is over after you've cooked, you know, but if you can spend a couple minutes scraping things off and and stuff like that, like it's going to save you a lot of, a lot of time. Yeah. So So maybe let's start with pellet grills. Pellet grills, I think are more work, 
hmm. than gas grills. Um, and there's some crossover there, but yeah, maybe we start with start with pellet grills and let's just talk about what you do every time you every time you cook. Sure. Um, so I think the every time you cook is yes, scrape your grates off. Depending on what you cook, um, you change the foil. See, this is not something I'm good at, but I would like to get better at because it makes a big difference. Yeah. Um, especially if it's, you know, you can look at, you can just look at the foil on your drip pan Mm -hmm. and like, if it's got a bunch of stuff that's caked on it, especially if it's not already like fully charred and black, Mm -hmm. like just change it out. Like whatever's there is going to burn and it's going to change the way your food tastes. Yeah. Um, we talked about this when we were talking about sides and desserts and mm-hmm. stuff. Like, I I was watching a video earlier this week of a guy that was cleaning a grill, and uh, he just said, you know, a lot of people say like it's just part of the seasoning, like it's a cast iron type of deal, like you just let it build up. Um, and he was like, but I guess that's true if you want your chicken tasting like beef and your pork and everything tasting the same. But if you want things to taste the way they should taste, give her a little. Give her a little clean. Yeah. You know? Well, and I think it'd be one thing if if it was just meat, mm-hmm. but at least most of the time when I'm cooking, what's the last thing? What's the last thing you do when you're cooking? Eat. No, before you eat, <laughs> you're cooking ribs. What's the last thing you do? Uh, scrape the grill. I don't know. No, you, I don't know what you're looking for. Eat. You put the sauce on, and then oh, you yeah, take it out. Yeah. You put the sauce until sauce, it, the messy part. Yeah. You put the sauce out there, and then once the, the sauce sets, which is about 20, 30 minutes most yeah, of the time. Yeah, take long. Then you shut it off, and that, like, the barbecue sauce isn't really burned off all the way. Right. So now you're going to go put a new piece of meat out there, and it's going to, then that sauce is going to start to burn, and it's going to mm-hmm. caramelize, and you're going to end up with like burnt sugar taste or burnt yeah. barbecue sauce taste. Right. In that first couple of hours of when you're really setting your smoke ring and getting the smoke flavor into stuff, it just, it ends up tasting nasty. That's a good point. Cause that first 30 minutes of smoke, I feel like is the most crucial and mm-hmm. what you're really going to taste. Yeah. And if you're cooking barbecue sauce from last week's whatever. Yeah. yeah that's a really good point. Yeah. So I changed my foil Almost every time. I mean, depending on what I cook. Um, And I don't know if this is a Traeger recommendation or what, but I try after every 24 hours of low and slow cook or every six hours of hot cook, um, I vacuum my vacuum my grill out. Hmm. The whole thing. Mm -hmm. Yep. I pull, take the racks out, take the the drip pan out and the heat shield Hmm. and you just end up with like this, this powder of sawdust or ash or whatever it is in there. Mm-hmm. Um, and I vacuum it out. Yeah. I've, um, I've got a little at a home Depot. They, they've got these like little shop vacs that sit on top of a five gallon bucket. Oh, so it's just a bucket head. Oh, that's a great that you idea. put on there. Because I get my filter all clogged up with the fine ash on mm-hmm. my vacuum, and it drives me crazy. I spend more time cleaning the filter and, or replacing it than I do vacuuming yeah, my no, grills so, out. I mean, it's it's great, too, because like it's a five-gallon bucket. It's got the handle on it. It's easy to hold on to. Mm-hmm. Um, it's way better than trying to lug my 15-gallon or however big, yeah. my big shop vac through the house, out to the grill. Man. Um, I'm like two seconds away from ordering one of those on Amazon right now. That's a great idea. Yeah, and it, I think I paid 20 bucks for it. I mean, that was six years ago, mm-hmm. probably. Um, so now it's probably 80 with yeah, inflation. Probably. Nice. Um, but yeah, watch for them on sale. Um, day after Thanksgiving is like, if you're buying a shop back, the day after Thanksgiving, I think, is the only day of the year you should buy one. Yeah, that's when I got mine. So, yeah, but ha- I just have a dedicated vac for for my grills. That's genius. Yeah. I so, like and idea. I vacuum it out and get all of that stuff out of there. And do you empty the pellets out when you do that? Uh, no, 
Because I, I uh, the first time I was vacuuming my ash pan, like I was new to everything, and I ended up sucking all the pellets out of the auger with my vacuum. Oh, and I was like, oh shoot, was I supposed to drop all of those? Yeah, sorry. So I misunderstood you. Mm-hmm. I vacuum out the ash pot entirely, and then I throw a handful of pellets in there. Okay. I the auger on the Traeger is a tight enough fit. I don't know. I could suck all of the pellets mm-hmm. from all the way from the firebox right or all the way from the hopper out mm-hmm. um so i just i threw a couple in there just so that it lights faster oh interesting so after you vacuum it out you just chuck a couple pellets yeah in i there. throw i like that I idea know. i've never done 15 that. or 20 just idea. toss them in there and instead of waiting for the auger to get yeah. enough in there to okay um so and the reason i do why i say you need to vacuum it out if you don't that ash will build up it will cover the igniter. There's, mm-hmm. They all have these little ceramic heating elements. That's what lights the fire. If that gets buried under ash, it w- your grill won't start. Mm-hmm. Like you won't be able to light it, um, which is a pretty big problem. Yeah, I feel like lighting it is a big deal. Yep, for sure. Um, there's, <laughs> yeah. So so that's a problem. Um, I've only ever had this happen on a dirty grill, but if you ever flame out, mm-hmm. um, have you, has your grill ever done that to you before? It hasn't. I've heard I've heard stories, but I haven't had it happen yet. Yeah. So there's a uh, there's a pretty scary phenomenon that happens <laughs> if your if your grill ever flames out. Don't just restart it. You have to vacuum it out. Mm. Um. Because it'll go back through that heat up sequence, the heating element will go, and it will eventually catch. Um, but when it does, instead of just having a couple little pellets there, it has all of this wood in a there. full load, huh? And yeah. it starts to smoke, and that smoke is flammable. Uh-huh. You'll get enough smoke, it'll ignite, and then it will explode. Oh wow! Um, my dad did this, and I like told him this like holes should be able to first. Oh. I gave him his first smoke, and I was like, "Look, if it flames out, it's because you didn't vacuum it. You have to vacuum it before you start it again." Huh. He didn't listen to me. <laughs> Started it back up, went inside, and boom! Really, <laughs> lit like through the lid open. Holy cow. Yeah. Like it's a, it's a fairly intense explosion that can happen. Wow. Um, So vacuum your grill out. Um, Like I said, it's, it's at, you know, basically after every long smoke or every other long smoke. Uh um, And then if you're going to cook hot and fast, it's every two or three cooks. I like that. So, so you mentioned the vacuum. Mm -hmm. Let's talk real quick. Uh, What equipment should we have on hand? When we are doing grill maintenance, besides um, a vacuum, what other stuff do you have? So I've got a just like a bristle brush. I mean, there are all sorts of people that say don't ever use the wire brush. I, yeah, I you'll all, swallow a bristle or whatever. I've always had wire brushes. Like, yeah, I've been cooking for going on twenty five years and. Never had an issue. So I always, like, I've always used a wire brush. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm probably going to choke on a bristle bristle this weekend. I was going to say, watch, knock on wood, man. Yeah. So it's some sort of scraper, whether it's a wire brush, um, they make wood, like wood brush, like wood handle things that are notched that are supposed to be pretty good. Mm -hmm. Um, There's another one that I keep seeing that it's like this coarse sponge that's wet and the steam helps clean stuff. I've seen that. Yeah. Um, I have never used one. I have the one that's like the, it's like bristly, but it's like wrapped around or something. mm -hmm. It's like brass, so it's not going to, Yeah. anyway, it's good. I'm fine with it. Yeah. So I think you need a good, a good grill brush. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's like, that's the big thing for the everyday cook. Right. When you get into like the big annual cleaning, which I guess we can talk about that now. Mm -hmm. I mean, I take my whole grill completely apart. Yeah. Um, you mentioned like having a tote to soak the grates and everything. Yeah. I, and I, 
I run my smoker more than most people probably do. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I probably, it's probably at least once a week that I, I fire up my smoker. Um, and during the summer, especially if I'm doing a lot of cooks, I mean, I probably put three or 400 hours on my grill Hmm. every summer, um, without too much effort. Yeah. Um, so I go way into it. I mean, I, I use, use my pressure washer to clean the outside of the grill. Um, some spots of the inside of the grill, I'll, I'll use my pressure washer just to help like cut through some of the greasy buildup. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, you, you kind of have to be careful with that, but yeah. Um, yeah, I can see that making a mess if you're not. Yeah. I mean, there's electrical components in there. Like you don't want to, you don't want to soak everything, but, Mm -hmm. um, you've got a, I mean, you've got a decent list here. Um, a scraper. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Like I, you, I've got a two inch putty knife Mm -hmm. that I use to scrape a lot of surfaces. Yep. Um, I use degreaser. We were talking about having a, like I've got a big tote that holds a lot of my cleaning stuff, Mm um, that I'll put in there and make a, you know, make a concentrated degreasing solution and soak my rack so that I get all the way back down to the porcelain. Yeah. That that's on those. Have um, you ever used like oven cleaner mm-hmm. in your smoker? Does yeah. it work all right? I've never done that. I've, <clears throat> I've seen a few people do it, but I've never done it. Yeah. I've tried a couple of different things. There's some pretty good citrus based cleaners, oh. um, citrus degreasers that come in a aerosol foam can. Okay. That I like a lot. Um, that it just starts to help break it down uh-huh. because a lot of this is is like burnt on, baked on. Mm-hmm. It's been cooking for a year. Like you, <laughs> you have to have a scraper, and like even mm-hmm. that scraper sometimes isn't enough. And you've got a flathead screwdriver you're using to to break all the carbonized stuff down. Yeah, though. especially in the um, in the grease chute. Mm-hmm. Like that's, it's just nasty yeah. and you're going to get dirty. Um, I wear gloves and I tear them every time that I don't know why I put the gloves on, but yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I use degreaser. Um, and, and I think that's like the big thing yeah. is the scraper, the degreaser. Um, do you use like a Brillo pad or anything like that? Mm-mm. I never have, but I, no, I watched a few videos today in preparation for this and people, I mean, people get into it. They got all kinds of stuff. I've never used a Brillo pad or anything like that, but yeah, I, um, I mean, I don't, I mean, I, I'm just using a blade to, to scrape them down, vacuum them right. out. And then, you know, the high pressure from, from a pressure washer will do, do a lot of work for you. Hmm. So, but then, um, then when it's done, I mean, you put it all back together and then I coat the outside of mine with just like a real light coat of, of oil. Interesting. Yeah. The outside of your pellet grill. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Just to kind of polish it up, uh, kind of like waxing it, but I, and I just, it depends on what I've got normally like a grapeseed or, um, some sort of avocado oil. Okay. And just kind of a high smoke point type of oil. Yeah. Just kind of, coat it up and help protect it from rust and mm-hmm. i mean most of these are powder coated so it's just to make it look you know pretty and shiny and right um so and i do that on my pellet grill i also do it on my gas grill um mm. i mean gas grills you don't get as much of the like caked on baked on stuff because you're not cooking as long and it's normally a higher heat Right. We were talking um, about this. A lot of stuff burns off and there's not as much just slow dripping grease that just slowly bakes yeah. on. I uh I do have a lot of trouble with grease fires on my on my gas grill though. Mm-hmm. Is the it drips past the flame and then it sits down in the mm-hmm. sits down in the bottom of the grill and then all of a sudden that gets hot and all of a, if that right. goes. Um so I have I have fairly regular grease fires because I'm not as diligent in cleaning my grease pan um, on my gas grill like I am my my smoker. Yeah. Um, I've only ever had one grease fire on my on my pellet smoker. Mm-hmm. 
and I knew I should have cleaned the grill before. Like I thought about it and I was like, I should do this. I was like, I don't want to do this. And I didn't. And I turned it up to set the, set the sauce on, on the ribs. And luckily I hadn't put the ribs back out there, but it was, it was a mess. It was a pretty big fire. (laughs) Well, and I think I've talked about this on here, but that's what happened to me at the Super Bowl. I was trying to do some queso. The last thing, everything else was done, so I just cranked it up as high as it would go and thought, man, I don't know, it's pretty dirty in there, and I think that's the only time I've ever really had a bad grease fire, but, I mean, it was horrible. Everything just tasted like... Yeah, soot. Yeah, soot, and ugh, the pan will never be not, you know, that yellowish hue that they get. Yeah. It was it was bad. Yeah. Um, the one thing I will say about gas grills, though... Um, on Weber, they're called flavor bars. I, I assume everyone's got some sort of name for them, but mm-hmm. the little angle iron pieces that sit over, um, yeah, over the flames, cover the burner, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Um, they are like ninety bucks if you buy name brand ones, or it's like twenty dollars on Amazon oh. for no name ones. Interesting. The, so, do you replace them often? Yeah, I. Probably every couple of years. I mean, once really? I can see through them or they're yeah. like starting to, uh, I'll replace them. Mm-hmm. And that really helps keep even heat. Interesting. So. Okay. Yeah. That, that becomes part of the, the yearly maintenance is going through and say what's broken, what's not working right. Um, yeah. and replacing parts as needed. Yeah. So. Hmm. And that's something that I, that I think needs to be hit on is. You know, loose screws, loose hardware, like wobbly um, stands, stuff like that. I feel like a once a year, like, look over could solve you a lot of problems. Like when I, I mentioned last week that my gorilla blew over in the wind. I mean, I'm still really upset about it, but the handle on the lid is just wiggly. So, mm-hmm. and I'd like to nip that in the bud before it becomes a huge issue, you know? So yeah, just little things like that. I mean, stuff's going to happen, but I, I watched a guy from Traeger go around with a screwdriver and tighten up like all the, all the yeah. hardware, just make sure everything was aligned properly. I thought I would never even think to do that on a yearly, you know what I mean? Like that's, that's simple. It's a really simple thing to do, but we'll you know, save you a headache down the road if you just take a second to do it. And especially if you move your grill around a lot, or at least on those moving parts, Mm -hmm. like tighten the screws where the lid attaches, tighten it on your handle. If you've got a front shelf that articulates, like tighten that up. Mm -hmm. Um, And legs. Oh my gosh. Like if you move your grill around, like tighten the leg bolts Mm -hmm. at a minimum every year. Like there's nothing... (laughs) <laughs> there is nothing as infuriating as bumping your grill and a bolt coming out mm-hmm. and the whole thing falling over. Yeah. But like one, you're like, your meat's probably going to go bad. You're probably going to damage something in the grill. Mm-hmm. And then like you have a giant chunk of metal that's 300 degrees. Like it's not easy to work on or fix while it's, uh, right. while it's super hot. Mm-hmm. So Yeah. It, it's just that discipline of like every time, like every time I know I'm going to change the foil, like, yes, it's a pain in the butt, but yes, that's what I have to do. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it, if you can build that discipline, just like, okay, we had dinner, like the grills cooled off. Like I have to go outside and put, put the cover on my grill. Mm-hmm. Um, that can save you a lot of headache and heartache and, you only have to leave your pellet grill uncovered once and have the wood and the auger get wet yep. to know you will never do that again. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Once learned those, that the hard way. Yeah. Once those pellets get wet and expand and then dry out again, man, they're like, it's a mess. They're man. as hard as cement. Oh yeah. It's miserable. Yeah. I, uh, I did that on my, on my first Traeger mm-hmm. and like had to pull the whole auger out of it. And man, it was like friggin' cement. I was there with a hammer and a screwdriver trying yeah, to chisel, trying to get it all off. Yeah. It was, it was mm-hmm. so infuriating. 
Yeah. Hmm. Um, it, you've got a drum. I mean, the drum is the one thing that I could see, like, part of it being seasoning. Yeah, and and that's what I was going to say. Like, I don't do, and, and I am not an expert by any means, but a drum, a 55-gallon barrel, the metal is so thin that I kind of like having a little buildup if nothing else, just for a little extra insulation. So that it is a little bit of a seasoning aspect. However, if it gets hot, like, and usually you're cooking low and slow, but occasionally I've had it get really hot and the side starts smoking inside and it just gets disgusting. So I'll go in, I get like the plastic putty knives and just kind of scrape off anything that will come off. I don't degrease it or get too hardcore with it, which maybe I should, but I don't. And I just scrape anything that comes off pretty easy. I, I take off. Um, and then I, I try to vacuum out the bottom, which your idea or your, um, what you were saying about that vacuum hook to a five gallon bucket, like that would be so nice because I, I like I said, I, I did it on Saturday and, you know, did like half of it and then had to take my filter off my shop vac and mm. bang it out, blow it out with my air compressor, put it back on just to do it again. So I like that idea, but yeah, I vacuum it out, but I do, I, I do leave some stuff on. However, on the lid, especially I notice if I'm not good about scraping off kind of that extra stuff, uh, once it heats up, you'll get a little dripping on your meat mm, and it doesn't yeah. necessarily like it doesn't affect the taste too much, um, but it just looks kind of gross. Yeah, and especially when I was trying to do those competition ribs, like that's something that through the practice rounds I learned pretty fast. Like I can't have them right under the holes on my lid, or you're gonna get that black drip that just. I mean, it was literally just a black circle everywhere where I had an exhaust hole on my on my lid. So. Um, but yeah, other than that, I just kind of scrape it off, vacuum it out, and then it's, it's pretty good to go. So, um, it, I mean, there's no grease pan, so the grease just kind of falls in the ash and the ash just kind of mixes it in. And so I just vacuum it out. Sometimes I'll leave it a little too long and it just kind of like, not necessarily concrete, but it kind of comes together in a concrete like consistency. Um, and so, and that's kind of what I was doing on Saturday. I had to like reach down with my shot vac and hit it a few times to break it up. And then it came yeah. up in kind of chunks. Kind of reminded me of like a, a particle board wood type of deal or mm. something like that. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. But, um, but yeah, I do. I, I kind of like leaving the seasoning on there. Yeah. Stuff tastes a little bit the same, but I, I like it and I'm not going to go on and degrease my barrel. Cause like I say, I feel like the the thickness of a 55 gallon drum like any anything you can add to that to help insulate your cook i feel like is is worth it so those are my thoughts um yeah. i'm happy to be corrected by anybody that does it differently but that's what i what about you with your pit barrel what do you do with I, it so the pit barrel is super nice mm -hmm. because it's porcelain coated the whole thing um so, the inside too? Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, the whole thing is So it's like a Weber kind of. Yeah, it Yeah. It it really is. It's like those Weber kettles that Yeah. That would survive a nuclear blast and still They're just like indestructible. So huh. yeah, I mean there's a little bit of dripping. Um but most of that drips down into the charcoal ash in the bottom mm -hmm. that I either vacuum out or just pick it up and dump it mm -hmm. um there's not a whole lot of buildup that ends up happening in it but yeah. no i was actually thinking about that this week and i'm super excited for it to get just a little bit warmer mm -hmm. um because i i want to go big on the pit barrel this yeah. year i really want to spend some time getting used to that and mm -hmm. um and cooking on it. i'm really excited you've you've inspired me with your barrel yeah <laughs> so dude i love my barrel that's my favorite thing to cook on until this offset gets done, which we are so close. I know. Are so we uh we still on for a a test fire this weekend? Oh heck yeah, dude. 
my uh i mean shout out to kevin my father-in-law he he's retired and he's awesome and i we've i've been going out every saturday working on this thing and i mentioned to him man i just got a lot on my plate like i want to get this done and i went out last saturday and he more or less had kind of just taken all my ideas and fabricated everything that we were going to do over the week and it is basically done so Dude. we're gonna paint it and then we're gonna do a test kick on it this saturday or yeah probably saturday and see see how it goes i'm so excited how are you gonna paint it uh i think i'm just gonna paint it the way that i did my drum i looked on and i thought about doing the uh the uh linseed oil mm-hmm. um and just kind of rubbing everything with that and i might do that anyway but i'm just gonna paint it with that high heat um black paint like an okay. engine enamel type thing yeah. um i don't anticipate that lasting very long especially on the firebox but i'm new so i figure i'll try it and if it doesn't yeah. work then i'll strip it off and do something different but yeah, yeah. that'd be cool i'm pretty excited about it but i say it'd be cool to like powder coat it but yeah i almost don't like you'd have to have a huge oven to set that right yeah See, I don't, I didn't even look into that because you'd have um, to have it professionally done. Yeah. Like, yeah, exactly. And, and I don't know enough about it to, you know, but I, I'm really excited, but that's been a pipe dream for so long. And now that it's here, it's almost like intimidating. Like I'm like, yeah, yeah, we'll do something this weekend. And it hit me like today. It's like, that's here. Like I got to get stuff figured out. I got to find wood. Like I'm, I've looked like recreationally, like, Hey, where would I find barbecue wood? Like, it's kind of hard to find here mm-hmm. in Utah. So we'll see how it goes. Yeah. We might just be cooking, uh, with charcoal and some chunks if I can't find anything, but it'll still be fun. Yeah. That'll be super cool. Yeah. I know there's the place in Salt Lake that I still owe you the, I gotta look yeah. up. Yeah. Um, and it's crazy because we're surrounded by fruit orchards uh-huh. that you've got to, but I think you kind of got to get in with, with people to get those. And yeah, that's what I was wondering if I could, if I knew anybody that knew anybody. Yeah. Which, but. which Zollingers are you in with? Yeah, yeah that's true. <laughs> I know a couple of Zollingers, but it's the wrong family. It's yeah. the wrong Zollinger family. <laughs> well, now you've inspired me. My boss buys a lot of fruit trees from Zollingers. I wonder if yeah. he could put in a good word for me. I don't know. Yeah, you just need a you just need the ones that are a year old. Yeah, that have been cut down and you know drying out, mm-hmm. curing for a while. I didn't even so. think about Zollingers. I was thinking about over in Brigham City, but yeah. Anyway, all of our international listeners don't even know what we're talking about right now. So, great orchards. We are there is a whole fruit highway. Yes, just thirty to, minutes from here. I used to drive it to work every day when I worked. In Ogden, it was glorious. It was my favorite drive. But. Alrighty, well, I think we, I think we've kind of hit it, Mike. Yeah, uh, like we've we've so. talked through all these things. Um, yeah, I think discipline is a really big piece of it, and mm-hmm. just you know, making sure you do the little things every time. Mm-hmm. Um, otherwise, you're gonna have to spend a lot of time fixing stuff that breaks and cleaning up big messes. Yep, so. I think it's just like dishes. Like if you just leave them in the sink overnight they're so much harder to clean than if you just get them while they're hot clean them off like i i really want to make it make a joke about it i don't know what you're talking about put mine in the sink and they just magically get clean every night but me <laughs> when you talked about this today she does the same thing with the uh cardboard on the on the garage floor she's like i just throw it out there and it makes its way into the recycling i can't say anything because she takes pretty good care of me but it was I, funny yeah yeah, magically my underwear drawer is always full. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> Wives are great. <laughs> they are awesome. 10 out of 10 would recommend. Yes. Do it. So. Alrighty. Well, I think it's that time. Thanks for, uh, thanks for listening, everybody. Yeah. And until next time, I'm John. I'm Mike. And this is another episode of Fat Guys with Smokers. Thanks for listening to the Fat Guys with Smokers podcast. Be sure to check us out on Instagram and Facebook. Leave us a comment. We'd love to hear from you. Be sure to subscribe so you don't forget to tune in for even more nonsense from a couple of bad guys with smokers.
Don't forget to like, subscribe.